Hello, home dogs. Nice to see you in the channel today. I would normally start this video in my usual manner, pelting directly into the camera. However, today <coughs> we're going to be professional YouTubers and do a full Xbox Series S review. And a disclaimer, I am not a review channel, but I have tried my hardest when reviewing this console. So enjoy, Timothy. Enjoy, Nigel. I see you there. I see you. For, so for those of you who do not know anything about the console, I'll speak about it briefly like I did in my unboxing video. Cheeky blog. Links in the description. You've got me right. So the Xbox Series S leverages the same 8-core Zen 2 as the Xbox Series X. Now, the main difference between the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S is the GPU. This delivers up to 1440p and also delivers 120 frames per second, which is indeed close to the 4K 60 frames that the Xbox Series X also gives us. However, what the Series S does is when connected to a 4K TV, or monitor it will upscale the games that you are playing which is good so it will be slightly crisper than normal but not exactly reach the same quality as the xbox series x so even though there is a huge price difference the xbox series s is priced at 249 in the uk i believe and 229 in the us we are fortunately still able to get super quick loading times in a higher frame rate that we would get in the Xbox X. So we are getting a powerful little console for the price of 249. Storage wise, you're, you're probably asking, what, what games, how many games can I fit on this console? Well, you can fit 365 gigabytes worth of games, apps, to this console. So it's not a lot because games uh, now are massive, absolutely huge, like the new card is a big boy however in the back of the console there is a storage slot so you can get the Segate what's one terabyte um little chip that you just put into the back of your console it's super small and you can get an extra um one terabyte so it's super useful if you are finding yourself reaching maximum capacity within like five days of having the console not me not me I could never. I don't play games, do I? Anyway, the reason you are here, the meat and potatoes, that full juicy review. I have spent a few full days on this console, enough to give you a, a Sun High styled in-depth review. So I hope this helps any of you guys who are trying to pick up the Xbox Series S. So let's do what most people do in society today and start with the outside look of the console as you can see it's super super sleek it looks good it's tiny for what this console can do it is a tiny little mushroom um i think this now lets us know that it doesn't need to be a super thick boy size doesn't matter and you can fit a lot of power into a compact little device like this I might just plug it out and show you guys, why not? There is um, two exhausts, two on the side so it can breathe and then you've got the little McDonald's speaker at the front. This is fantastic because you may not be able to order your chicken nugs um, through the Xbox, but say um, it is covered here or here for some reason, um, there are little uh, dents so you can place it like this. Um, it can still breathe whilst it's been covered so it's really interesting design and this is obviously a necessity or it wouldn't be there i see so many people complaining about this but personally i think it looks really nice and without it it would be a bit plain wouldn't it do you agree i hope so what i also really like about this is that it's got a physical power button on the side which actually pops out of it so you're not going to be like turning your console off and on by mistake you're not going to be nudging it and accidentally turning it off because it's prominent and it's basically there, which is great because I've had an issue before with other consoles such as my Nintendo Switch where the, the power button is more indented in, which is kind of annoying because you have to really press hard to turn it off and turn it on. Whereas with this one, it's perfect. It's not level with the console, it's just protruding a little bit. So it's enough to notice it's there whilst moving around the console, I guess. Anyway, I digress. 
as you can see, the console is a matte finish um, as well as the control, which I think is amazing because you don't get that tacky um, look after like a few months. It's not gonna have any scratches. It's not gonna look greasy with my Dorito fingers. Um, it's just a really nice matte console and it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna age badly. It's gonna stay young forever. And on the back of the console, we have six ports, I believe, I think. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I can count 10 points to Gryffindor. We have the um, power button where you plug it into the mains. You have the storage expansion section. We have an HDMI, two USBs and an ethernet cable. I have got a little Easter egg for you guys. So for those of you who do not know this, I didn't know. You can use your Xbox with your Alexa or your home control system. So you may have a Google Home attached to your phone. You may have an Alexa. And um, what you can do with this is you can turn your Xbox on and off. You can say, hey Alexa. Alexa will say, a yes. Turn my Xbox on for me, Alexa, and your Xbox will turn on. You can also do other things, such as you can um, tell your Alexa to screenshot anything. You can tell your Alexa to record some games. So just sitting there, playing your game, <coughs> too lazy to screenshot. You can just say, hey Alexa, screenshot. And, and Alexa will do just that. Will I be using this concept? Probably not, because I'm old school like that, baby. So. Probably won't be using it, but it is a good feature for you techies, I guess. Techies. Am I someone's mom? And one thing I've noticed that you cannot do is turn your console on with your control. So there is no pressing of the button for your console to magically turn on. That doesn't happen. Which brings me on smoothly to the control itself. Now, the control itself has a really nice design. It's matte finish and it's also got these extra grippy bits. Um, let me see if I can show you. You probably can't see the texture, but there is like a um, texturized finish, which is so good because with other controls, they get super slippy when playing games, especially after playing for a long time. Your hands get kind of disgusted and sweaty. So with this grippy bit, it feels really, really nice to hold. The control itself feels really, really great. The only downside is the fact that it is again battery powered. We already know with Xbox controls, they are battery powered. So for me, tiny bit disappointing, but it is what it is. Um, another thing is that this is now Bluetooth capable. Does this mean that you can now use Bluetooth headphones with the control, with the console? No, you cannot. To use that, you still have to plug in your headphone to the bottom of the control. The only thing is, is that not all my headphones worked with this. So my Razer headphones um, worked with this perfectly well. However, I have like cheapier headphones and I plugged them into the um, control and they didn't actually work, but they did work with my iPad. I'm thinking maybe not all headphones are actually compatible with uh, the control. So you're probably thinking, why does it have Bluetooth then? Well, if you're not a PC gamer, you probably won't know or care. You can now finally use your control wirelessly with the PC when gaming, which is a godsend because I think this is gonna be one of my favorite controls ever. So I'm happy to use it on my PC too. Thank you, Xbox. Speaking of ASMR, I think that everyone cares about, but no one actually seems to ask or do in reviews, how does the control sound? Now, I think it's super, super quiet. I will insert a clip of me playing it by myself in the darkness here. Watch this one. As you could hear, it was really quiet. And I think this is great if you live with your wife, kids, girlfriend, husband, boyfriend, your dogs, your dog puppers, your dog children, and they're all trying to sleep. The most annoying thing is when you're trying to sleep is someone <laughs> when you're trying to sleep. It's a bit annoying. So I think it's a little quieter. There definitely has been more clunkier controls but it depends how aggressively you play. But that's how it sounds for the review. Review queen, hello. Now, the meat and the 
patatas, the UI of the Xbox Series S. Bellissimo. Sounds like some type of spell the way I'm saying bellissimo. Should do it with an accent really, shouldn't I? Anyway, the UI. But now remember homie, this is my first Xbox, so I decided to do some ex Yes. As, as I was saying, uh, this is my first Xbox and I had to do some extensive 10 minute, 15 minute research to see what the uh, dashboard looked like on the previous console. Therefore, I can then compare and tell you if I think it's any different or not. For me, it looks good. It's logically laid out, which I like. And at a glance, at a little glance I don't think that you would think there was much of a difference however once you have a goosey gander you have a proper look around you can actually see that there is a difference and it's really well managed in comparison to other dashboards a favorite thing of mine about the um, Xbox Series S dashboard is that if you double tap the guild button it opens up a quick menu and it actually shows everything that you have been using recently and I just think it's super helpful and useful when you're flicking through a game and want to find something super quick you can just do a little and it comes up it's nice it's smooth it's quick it's fantastic what I also like is I think it's really easy to view and manage your gaming library check out, check out your apps and you can see your progress there really nicely too which I think is great you'll see it all on the screen as I talk anyway the screen loading to begin with from dashboard to dashboard I guess was a little slow at first and I was thinking oh xbox what is this and then I updated it and it's super fast it's great you can flick through each section super fast and really really easily which i like it i was ruined at the start but the, the update saved me i think when you are getting a new console you need to realize that there are going to be tons of updates and patches so don't think your xbox is broken don't think you've got a bad xbox a bad batch it's just a new console it's going to need some updates how about the obvious things that they've kept when you're downloading the game you can see the bandwidth you can see the percentages the percentages the percentages. The percentages are much of downloading the game so you can see what's what, you can pause, you can resume the game when it's downloading. Just the normal things that shouldn't be changed on consoles because if it's not broken, don't fix it. That's the saying. Son, that is the saying. Now, on to the setup of the console. Now, this setup for me was magical. I have never, ever, ever in my life once set up a, a console using an app on my phone. Now, I downloaded the Xbox app and started off the process. What you needed to do was, you got a number on the screen of your Xbox. All you need to do is get your phone and put in the number on the screen that it gives you and put it into the app. Um, for me, <laughs> my app crashed twice. But after that, everything was really fast and it was a great process. So, um, it was super quick to load up, the app was, after it crashed. So the app in itself, as soon as everything got started, you just needed to decide whether, got an itchy nose, Ugh, not a bogey, ew. You needed to decide the privacy settings. So did you want your Xbox to be accessible as soon as you open it, or do you want to, to have to put a pin in? Do you want to have to do like extreme safety measures if you're living a house with people that want to steal your games? Or anything like that. So security measures and then what you would do is you would log in and just customize your xbox the way you want it to i think it was like a five-step process and i was just like yes 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 then you are introduced to your xbox welcome to your xbox the fastest setup i've ever had and i think doing it from the app is the way forward because it can take a long time when putting your login details into this it can get annoying when you're using a control you're setting your new console up with an app is the best process and I, I i enjoyed it i was shocked actually very good microsoft so after i was able to set up the console i then got on to downloading the games yes game time so the two things that we all know about the console number one backwards compatible yes great Good fact. Number two, it's an all digital console. There is no disk drive. Every single game that you have, you will have to download, which 
Games Pass. Games Pass is fantastic. There are a plethora of games that everyone will enjoy. So I just want to say, Games Pass is fantastic. For me, the first game I wanted to showcase to you guys was Dirt 5. Hi, Sun from the future here. Um, I can't actually run any Dirt 5 gameplay, so I'll be running a, another game alongside talking about the gameplay experience with the Xbox 3S. But, be, but before we get on to talking about what games I've downloaded and about the games, let's talk about the way the games look. Now, hand on heart, no lies, I cannot lie and say that I have a 4K TV because I do not have the privilege of owning 4K TV or monitor. Sorry, but also not sorry. So I cannot comment on how it looks with the human eye in regards to like the 4K upscaling and also the way movies look. We all know 4K looks beautiful, so you can all imagine how it looks anyway. Um, fortunately for, for me, and unfortunately for you guys, regardless of if my monitor is shown 4K or not, it's super hard to tell the difference with the technology that we have today. So regardless of the fact that I cannot cover how the 4K locks, you wouldn't be able to see anyway without being here with your human eye. Anyway, I digress. Games and films still look good with the 1080p monitor regardless. But, and it's a big but, I just want to say to get full use of this HDR 10 standard console, I would suggest a 4K TV. But will people want to get all the benefits out of this console? Yes, therefore I suggest if you can afford it, get one. And for those of you who do not know what HDR is, I'll tell you. It makes everything look better. It makes certain colors pop more than the others and it basically gives you a much more pleasurable viewing experience. Now, even though there are not many 4K games out there just yet, your console does upscale everything to the 4K monitor that you may be using. So even though the console isn't 4K, it is 1440p, the console still scales everything to your monitor. Now, if you're going to upgrade, and that word upgrade is vital to this conversation, I suggest that you get a 4K monitor if you are going to upgrade as this is when you will see the benefits of the upgrade from your previous xbox console unless you had something like really super old it is the upscaling of the games the 4k movies with the apps the disney apps the netflix apps that you would want to see whilst using the console and that's what would make the console super beneficial as with the 4k monitor you will see the extra benefits when streaming apps from the disney app and the netflix app and, and the hulu app it's more beneficial if you are upgrading to have the 4k monitor so I went off on a little tangent there, didn't I? Just like, giving you some advice. Um, the gameplay is what you probably want to hear. So I downloaded Dirt 5. I'm not here to talk on the game and give a full review on the game because I've got awful car control anyway. However, I did have a really good time playing the game and I enjoyed it. The first thing I noticed when playing the game is the improved frame rate. The frame rate is so smooth and it's super duper fluid. Duper de doo de doo. Duper de doo de doo. For me, I thought it was super important to play more than one game, slightly different games from each other. I decided to uh, download Into the Woods. The main thing for me when playing Into the Woods, I noticed was the loading screens. They were super fast. I approximately had to wait around two seconds between each screen. I was so impressed. It gave me a little tutti fruity feeling. I have never experienced fast loading screens like that in my life. Maybe on the PC, but never on a console itself. Another thing, another thing that I noticed, can we just take a second to quick resume? Wow, incredibly fast. It says what it does and it does it good. Absolutely seamless. And for those of you who do not know what quick resume is, I'll tell you. The, the main purpose of Quick Resume is that it allows you to actually continue to play your game from a suspended state. Instantly, no loading screens, you turn your console off, your console goes into sleep mode, you're on another game, you can pick up your previous game like that within seconds. I noticed this when going from Dirt 
to Night in the Woods. I literally just switched through games seamlessly with no loading screens. It was fantastic and it's just making the whole gameplay experience in itself so much better. Hats off to next gen. Whilst playing games, whilst downloading games, did the, did the console scream at me? Did it shout at me once? No, it was extremely quiet. When playing games, when playing games, when downloading super heavy games, silence. It's fantastic. Nothing. No rumble, no rrr, absolute silence. Now, On to recording gameplay. This is admittedly the, the, the only downside, the only thing that I'm going to moan about, I should say. Now, when recording gameplay via the console, it's still capped. If you want to record at 4K, you're only going to get 30 seconds. 1080p, you're going to get around 60 seconds, I think, to 80 seconds. I believe, which is kind of annoying. Um, if you want to record gameplay, there are many different other ways. I would personally suggest getting yourself an Elgato capture card, the links in my description. Um, and it's probably the best thing that I use. And if you guys want any help, if you want to see my streaming setup, let me know, just actually give the video a like and I can do a full tour of what I use and briefly how I use it. I think it would be uh, really helpful for any upcoming streamers or anyone that just wants to maybe improve on the way they stream and get to know how they capture footage. So just drop a cheeky like if you want to see that. The, the verdict. I'm going to take a seat for this. Sit with me. So after spending time with my McDonald's speaker box, what is my verdict? It is not the most powerful console out there. And I think that is obvious. But does it need to be? No. This console is most definitely aimed at a certain type of gamer. It's not going to be aimed at someone who is crying in their Cocoa Pops due to the fact that there is no tag tracing in Devil May Cry. This console is for the people that will not particularly care about those types of issues maybe. They may have, they may have picked up this console to game casually maybe to explore different games on the xbox pass maybe to play some fifa for some indie games who knows maybe it's aimed at the more casual type of gamers and i really really hate using that phrase but i just did sorry about it what i'm trying to basically what i'm trying to say is that if you want a powerhouse of a console, the Xbox S isn't for you. Pick up the X. I personally think if you had the previous Xbox and you are looking to upgrade, again, this isn't the console for you. The Xbox X would be the better upgrade. As when in comparison to the 2013 Xbox One, there is not a huge difference between that Xbox and the Xbox S. Other than the upscaling, the GPU, and the tiny model of the console there is not a huge difference so i i would suggest again the upgrade is probably the the better choice however if you've never owned an xbox before this one is for you i'm new to xbox so i decided that i would prefer the xbox s um if you are deciding that you are just new to playing games and you don't know whether to get a super pricey console such as the x such as the PS5, because you don't know if you're gonna play it that much. You don't know if you're gonna be that bothered about the graphics of the game or, or 4K or the GPU, then I would suggest that you go for this console. It's perfect for you. For me, there are certain games that I would play on this and there are certain games that I would play on my other consoles. And that's just how it is and that's fine. So for me, as a new Xbox user, I think this is absolutely perfect as I did not have anything to upgrade from and I'm not seeking more power. Luckily, I'm not that power hungry. Another thing to think about is if you have a 4K monitor or not. Now, some of you will be in the same position as me. You do not have a 4K monitor as of yet and maybe you're never even planning on buying one. Therefore, you do not need a 4K console, do you now? So it all depends on 
the way you want to play, the types of games you will be playing and what interests you in terms of spec specs wise. I see so many people uh, bashing the Xbox Series S and I don't quite understand it because Xbox have given you a choice. You, you either go for an extremely powerful console or the lesser, the Xbox S. They've given you a choice and I think what's really nice is the, the price of the Xbox X. If, you're, if you've got a kid who's never picked up a game in his, in his life or he's been playing iPad games or she's been playing on her DS and she's decided to get into gaming more, why would you not get this extremely powerful cheap little box for, for your for your children, for your family, for your family house? Um, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a really perfect uh, console and for me I, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I, I admittedly, hands up, years ago was kind of like xbox and now i i love it i've got my my pc which i play um i've got an xbox pass on and also my xbox series s and i was overwhelmed with how much i i loved this little thing and it's coming from my heart i i i love this so much um the control is perfect everyone said that i would love this control shout out to jake he told me that i would love this he was right um, so yeah, I, I honestly am super impressed with it, I, with what it can do, with the size of it, it's incredible. Um, there, are many li li there are many things I left up there which will help you decide whether you want this console or not. <sighs> I hope that this review has been okay. Let me know how I've done because I don't really do reviews and I've kind of struggled with them in the past. So. Don't be too harsh on me and let me know if this was okay for you guys and if it was, I'll do more reviews. Um, I hope you enjoy watching and we can't leave without the cyber hugs! Mm. A lovely 